Fleming. Now, now we bring in Saints analyst Buford Jordan. And Buford, you know, it's obvious from what we saw at home watching it on television, but what did you see as a former football player that maybe a fan or media didn't see? Well, I, hey, I saw a lot of, um, you know, bad, you know, plays with the fumbles, turnovers and all, but as well I saw some coaching decisions that probably wasn't the best. You know, when we, we're sitting here, our defense just made an awesome stop. We get the ball at the five-yard line and we're trying to pass the ball. When we got Deuce and Corny in this backfield, I just thought at that time we should have ran the ball, hey, punt it back and let our defense come out and work. Well, it was only 14-16 at that time. Right. Safety caused it to be 14-18, put a little more pressure on your team. So you're saying right off the bat there was some questionable play calling, some questionable play calling starting, you know, like you said, after that safety. Just, you know, we're not the coaches, but, you know, some things that you question. Well, I just questioned it. You know I mean? We said right after that point, but I think you and I were talking about it. We questioned it even before that, you know, when they came out passing the first three times, what passes, you know, on a reddish, wettish, wet surface, guys slipping and all, and you got Deuce sitting here who did not see the game much at all. So, well, hey, without Deuce, hey. this team is nothing. I, I know what you're saying. We'll, we'll, so we'll, I say we'll, zilch. We'll come back to that in a second. All right. Now, no matter how many times we... It hurts a little. It hurts a little, but um, our, our guys have to keep their heads up. We've, we've had a hell of a year. Um, had we not turned the ball over, I, I think we could have won that football game. But... Uh, this football team has, has gone through so much, and uh, with the new staff, um, this organization has done a hell of a job. Players here, um, Coach Payton assembled these players here. We've all stuck in together. The team chemistry was uh, fabulous, and uh, the guys have a lot to hang their heads high for. All right, Joe Horn, who wanted to play so badly in these playoffs and, of course, could not with that groin injury. Chicago's defense aggressive, and any time a team is more one-dimensional, the Bears can pin their ears back, and they harassed Drew Brees most of the day. The weather was a factor. The field a little bit slippery, maybe in worse condition than even it was last week. That affected the passing game, drew a little bit off. Maybe the wet football has something to do, but both teams play in it. And they said, hey, Rex Grossman, you beat us. Rex Grossman in a key drive. Five plays, 85 yards, and Grossman completes all his passes on that drive, and he does beat them. He hadn't really done much of anything up until that fourth quarter drive to give the Bears an 11-point lead at that time. Of course, we'll have plenty more. Let's take a look at some of the numbers that matter. We're going to look at some of these game stats. The, the big thing, you see the square around it, the red <laughs> square. Four turnovers, I mean, very uncharacteristic for a Saints offense. Well, some people say that's a big thing, but you know what? Those first three turnovers were in the first half. Hey, we were down 16, nothing in that last minute left in there. Hey, the offense goes in and scores, you're down 16, seven. Come back half, at the half, defense stopped them. All of a sudden, it's 14, 16. We're back in the game. That 56 should have been at least 156 when you got the fifth, 14 to 16, and that didn't happen no matter what they say. That's where the coaching errors happen in that ball game. Well, speaking of the 56 yards, let's take a look at the running game. Look at these stats. Deuce McAllister, four carries, 19 yards, as long as Rush was 12 yards. I mean, that's Reggie Bush, I'm sorry. Right. Reggie Bush, four carries, 19 yards, longest of 12. Deuce, six carries, 18 yards. I mean, that's a total of 10 carries for your two running backs. Didn't we have a stat where if Deuce doesn't get the ball at least 15 times, the Saints don't win? That's not even half the carries right there. You know, Reggie, that's about his average carries a game. You know, but when we got Deuce, we need him getting that ball 12, 15, hey, 20 times if not, if this team is going to win. And we see that didn't happen, and that's why we're not in the, champ in the Super Bowl this game. Well, that is something that we will look back at. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, well, there, let's not take anything from of them. Course, They've had a course. great year all year long. You know, they played well. And one thing I like about what they did, they never quit. Yes, so they know they did. That was, a hard, that was the heart of the game. Yes, it was. Now, we're just getting started. On, welcome back to the Extra Point. The Bears defense was ranked number one during the regular season, and of course, for good reason. We bring, bring Buford Jordan back in, and Buford, what does Chicago do so well that you think flustered the Saints today? You did say that you thought the defense played okay, but they did some things that flustered the Saints. Oh, well, I just think they made them come out trying to play a game that they really not comfortable with. And I, I, this team does best run deuce. And I thought they didn't even test Chicago by doing that. 
Deuce McAllister, or Reggie, right. getting good yards, and we just didn't have that. Let's take, a, let's take a look at Breeze's counterpart, Rex Grossman, and let's look at the rest of the game first. He was 7-22 for 66 yards, no touchdown. That's not a good passer rating. I'm not good at math, so I'm not going to try and figure it out. But that one drive after the safety, he went 4-4, four for four, 78 yards, and a touchdown. I mean, that was basically the drive of the game. Well, it was. I mean, you know, he was, but he was able to get some protection. He had a, a running game that was working along with him. You know, and guys made key plays at key times, and hey, that's why they were able to win this game. Talk a little bit about Rex. I mean, he took a beating from the Chicago media. How did he play today, in your opinion? Well, I thought he played well. Hey, the team didn't have any turnovers. You know what I'm saying? They won't, didn't make any mental mistakes, you know, as far as jumping offside and all those things. Somebody was asking who got it. I thought he had the MVP of the game. Because, hey, when your quarterback don't do anything to lose the game for you, he gets the MVP, and I thought he did that. Yes, he did. Now, well, let's take a it kind of got away from you then in the fourth quarter. What coach said to you afterwards? You know, he just said, you know, it's, it's going to definitely sting. You know, he's been here before. It's going to sting. It's going to sting for a while. But um, like I said, uh, we played, you know, it's been a great run. Been a great run this year and nothing to hold your head down or, you know, walk out with a swagger. You know, we still, still had a great season. Personally, I couldn't be prouder to be part of a team or this team. Uh, the fact that, uh, you know, everybody is not really counting what we, what we accomplished, more just uh, looking at what we left out there on the field, the opportunity that we've missed just speaks to the character on this team. And uh, it's, a, it's a bitter pill to swallow right now. But uh, as things go on and, uh, you know, as time goes on and we get closer to starting up next season, you know, we'll start to look back. And uh, hopefully what we've done so far, we've set a precedent and we've set a standard. And, uh, you know, whoever is new on this team or whoever comes back, uh, hopefully they understand that this is the standard and this wasn't a fluke. What's the key to the fact that the Saints weren't able to pull this one out today? Um, I mean, um, you got to give your hats off to the Bears. I mean, they played great all around, um, special team and everything. <laughs> Turnovers, you know, turnover costs a lot of things, you know. Um, going into this game, we had it on our mind, like, don't turn over the ball, you know. Try not to turn over the ball. That's the main focus, and, you know, and that's what we was doing. Um, turnovers, you know, kill you, you know. They had um, better field position than what we had, and, you know, and that played a part tonight. This feeling stinks, of course, and the finality of it, but can you put into words that just being involved with this whole process this year and the Saints the turnaround and getting I mean, one step? Closer. I mean, it was excellent. I mean, you know, like, from 3 and 13 to where we were last year, the things we went through last year that no one really knows about, and to turn around full circle, the best word to describe it is excellent. Everybody was focused. I mean, it was a team, one of the best teams I've been on, so it was a tough loss. We turned the ball over, but then, then two on defense, we didn't get any turnovers, so it's uh, we, it's a, we, we win as a team, we lose as a team. We lost this game as a team. We turned the ball over too many times, and we didn't get any turnovers, so. Consequently, as I said, that's a recipe for a butt whipping. So, you know, um, they got some turn good turnovers like down in our territory early on, and we were able to keep them to three. But, you know, um, so they did some things late, you know, to uh, consequently you know, get in the end zone, and they players, uh, they play, they, they skill position players, and they did offensive line made some plays and stuff, and, you know, we weren't able to make enough plays. So that's why I'm here talking to you in this somber voice. We just didn't make the plays we need to make, and, um, they definitely made the plays that they need to make. Um, I don't think, you know, whether I know it starts knowing us, I don't think that had a, a part to do with anything. You know, they just made the plays and we didn't. Looking back, you, you can see everything that, you know, didn't didn't go exactly, you know, according to playing in the game. But, uh, you know, at, while we were out there, they, they were giving us a lot of favorable looks to, to throw the ball. And, uh, you know, that's what we did. Uh, I think we had a lot of success with, with the, you know, exception of, of a few big turnovers. Uh, I'd like to also add, uh, and finally here from outside of Soldier Field, it was one of the oddest and most exhilarating experiences of my life to come back home to Chicago and see a team that I grew up loving play against a team that I have grown to love. And I think I speak for the entire region when uh, the Saints picked all of us up, carried us on their shoulders, and carried us one step away from a dream and I think uh, we can look forward to lots of great football in the years to come if this nucleus stays together with the leadership of Coach Payton and Mickey Loomis and everybody involved with putting this team together and turning this thing around so drastically from 3-13 and 13 last year to one step away from the Super Bowl this year. Damon and Buford, let's send it back to you. That is very true, Eric. Thank you very much. Now, we'll wrap up this edition of the... Well, 
That is it for our last show, Buford. This is the last edition of the Extra Point. But tune in tomorrow night for more Saints and what the future holds for this team. For Buford Jordan, I'm Damon Darensburg. Mm -hmm. Have a great night, everyone. Had a lot of references to Katrina. Not a nice scene in many ways. Glenn Boyd has that side of the story. Uh, certainly not a, a nice scene at all. There's been to a number of NFL stadiums across this country. And tell you what, I've never seen tr fans be treated the way our fans were treated tonight. Not only fans, me as a reporter. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just unbelievable some of the things that were said. Right. Uh, you lose a game, that's fine. And we, you, go, you expect some ribbing because right. you, you do it as well. But when it becomes personal when it, that then you start to cross the line when you start insinuating that hey Katrina do you have a uh, how are you gonna get home in a boat right uh, uh, what, what is FEMA gonna do about this loss and some of the signs saying that what we, Katrina uh, didn't finish we would tonight we, we would tonight so it, it certainly became personal and a lot of fans just didn't I uh, didn't sit well with a lot of mm -hmm. fans they left the game with 10 minutes left in the game because they just kept being hounded uh, uh, with this. In fact, we talked to someone right during our 5 o'clock broadcast, which was live uh, from here from Chicago, and here's what he had to say about his experience here in Soldier Field. You left the game with about nine minutes left in the game. Tell me why. Well, I mean, these guys have been taunting us about Katrina the entire time in my section. Somebody asked, had somebody asked me, oh, did you live down there? I said, yeah, I had 11 feet of water in my house. I said, well, too bad you didn't drown. And, and this is, and that, that guy has not been the exception. This has been going on before the game, during the game. I mean, these guys have been violent with our fans, you know, throwing beers at people. All I got to say about that one is that I feel sorry for you guys and I wish the best for you guys. And if, if I had a million dollars in my pocket, I'd give it to you just to cover you guys and help you guys out. What about some of your fans who, who write uh, placards saying, you know, we're going we're gonna to finish with Katrina started. Some of these Bears fans, you know, just don't have no class. And all I care about is taking care of the family. And regardless of where it's at, it's all in the family. And our family is, you know, the United States first. They have not been very nice. But you know what? That's Okay. We're so proud of what the Saints have done for the city of New Orleans. We owe them everything. And we will be behind them 100%. Anyway. Oh, definitely. I'm definitely proud of them. Just too many turnovers, man. But uh, it's a long drive back to New Orleans. and. I'm ready to get back and uh, <laughs> Chicago fans, man. But uh, it's, it's worth every penny of it coming up here, man. But uh, Saints are still number one, and we're gonna get them next year, baby. We will be here. We will be behind the Saints 100% from here on out. We are so proud of what they've done for the city of New Orleans, and they've had an amazing year. And we are so proud of them. And that's all we have to say. And that's uh, just some of the fans and uh, some of their experiences here at Soldier Field. Uh, as we were doing the interviews, you can see a number of fans uh, uh, getting in the way, trying to get on, uh, hitting some of the girls and that sort of thing. Uh, and I can say one thing about the fans of New Orleans. They, were, they, they came out walking out of the stadium with their heads mm -hmm. high and, and mm -hmm. really were classy tonight in defeat. Mm -hmm. Unlike these, some of these Bear fans, many Bear fans mm -hmm. who came out here real belligerent, mm -hmm. even though they got a victory here tonight. Mm -hmm. you know? so, um, uh, it's just one of those things, and certainly I had a great time here the past yeah. four, four days, and this really rubbed me the wrong way, mm -hmm. you know, leaving here with a little, mm, mm -hmm. It just wasn't necessary considering that they walk, walked away so, with the Right, and where all this other stuff came from, you know, with the Katrina and everything, it's just right. it's mind boggling. It is unfortunate. Thanks yeah. a lot, Glenn. Mm -hmm. So once again, Kurt Ber awaiting the Saints return. Let's go live to Ben Lemoyne with an update out there. Ben? Well, Lee, you hear the term fair weather fan every once in a while. There are certainly none of those out here right now. And let me tell you something. I've talked to a lot of people. I've probably heard the word bittersweet 20 or 30 times this afternoon. And somebody just told me a second ago, they said, look, this is not a bittersweet thing. This is a very sweet thing. This is not the end of a season. This is really the beginning of a football team. Of course, a brand new coach, a brand new quarterback, brand new running backs and, and backs and people saying, we're already looking towards next season. I mean, fans out here, you guys have been, you guys have been sitting in the rain and the cold for quite some time. We'll get you out of here. Maybe four hours. Why is that? 
Because we love the Saints, and we can't wait for them to get here. We believe in the Saints. And what do you think about the fact that somebody just said this is not a bittersweet thing? This is a great thing for this team. Yeah, it is. Yeah. You think so? <laughs> Woman of many words. What are you guys thinking right now? You're in the rain, you're in the cold, but as I said just a little while ago, everybody wants to see this team come and see you guys and see this support out here. We can handle the rain. We've handled water before. We can do it again. Go Saints! And Lee, hey, I, I, I got to tell you, I want to clear something up real quick. I'm only wearing red and blue. I just looked down and realized this. Make no mistake, you saw me in the station today. That's what's underneath. I just want to... I want to make sure that we don't have viewers out there that get confused at all. Lee, that is the latest. We're still waiting for the plane. We were told that it took off at about 10.30. Should be landing here at about 1 o'clock. These folks will be waiting with me. We will talk to the players. We will bring you all that coming up tomorrow morning. Lee, back to you. All right, Benham. D Dawn says it's going to rain for about another 20 minutes or 20 so. Minutes. 20 minutes or so out there. Okay. So, Thanks, uh, but then they could have some more before but, the before the but before the team comes in. There's periods the of light rain throughout the evening. Okay. So. so if you're going out to the airport, bring an umbrella, bring a raincoat, cover. You may have to cover up your Saints shirt as Ben did. Definitely but, uh, some warm clothes. It should be a fun arrival when it happens. Thanks, Dawn. Thanks, Ben. Thank you for watching. That's our news. Have a great night. And He's the last word on sports. Fourth down on four. In a season where most everyone, in fact all of them, had this team picked fourth in the division, it's a pretty good season. And, uh, you know, again, I'm proud of this team. And uh, they put a lot of work in and, and turned this ship around in a, in a short period of time. Welcome into fourth down on four. I'm Scott Cody. You've got to learn how to win in the NFL. And while the Saints did it 11 times this season en route to going where no Saints team had ever gone before, Chicago showed why after every Saints loss this year, the word uttered most by the Saints players was turnovers. As he's done all week, Juan Kincaid again joins us live from just outside of Soldier Field with more from today's NFC Championship game. Juan? Hi there, Scott. Welcome back to Chicago once again. Let's forget about the final score for just a second. What a great ride this has been for this New Orleans Saints franchise and for the entire Gulf South. Look at it. 3-13 and 13 a year ago, making it to the NFC Championship game this afternoon. Of course, finishing up this evening with a loss to Chicago. It's been a fantastic ride, but unfortunately it came to an abrupt end. From where we started a year ago to now, I don't think anybody in this room, or probably in America, thought that we'd be here. And that's why today's loss is so difficult to swallow. The Saints' first ever appearance in the NFC Championship game left an awful lot to be desired. Unfortunately, you know, we kind of shot ourselves in the foot early with a few turnovers, and then the, um, uh, you know, just it seemed like we were always giving them great field position. It stinks. It, it does. And, um, you know, I mean, it happens. You know, it's just a... Uh, this is the wrong night for it to happen. Um, you know, I mean, obviously we, we would have wanted everything to go our way tonight. It didn't. And, um, you know that 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 what the results turned out to be. It had the potential to be worse than it was, but thanks to an impressive six-play defensive stand inside their own 10-yard line, the Saints were still in position to take the lead with a touchdown, if they could get their offense on track. Easier said than done. The first half, the Bears packed the line with eight men, daring the Saints to pass. Man fronts. Uh, anytime you get into a game like that where you're you're struggling on early downs, obviously it's difficult. With their defense dictating play, Chicago's offense found its rhythm through Thomas Jones. Eight carries on this 69-yard drive ended in the game's first touchdown, a two-yard score, and a 16-0 Chicago lead. They were getting their blocks, you know. They did a good job offensively, uh, you know, running the ball like late in the game and stuff, and we weren't able to stop them. The Saints couldn't stop them, but they could emulate the Bears' offense by getting into the end zone themselves. And they did just that right before halftime, using the hurry-up offense, going 73 yards and eight plays. Breeze found Marcus Colston for the score, and the Saints finally had something positive to build on, which they did on their first possession of the third quarter, cutting the Bears' 16-7 lead to just two. On this Reggie Bush catch and scamper to the house, 88 yards, tackling a little showboat, and the Saints had made this a game again, 16 to 14. When I first scored that touchdown, I, I, I kind of felt like we were uh, possibly on a roll, and uh, we possibly had a, a chance, to, you know, to come back and and uh, you know turn turn this uh, this momentum around. Importance of getting the ball to Deuce, and uh, sometimes it's throwing to him. Uh, 
But at the same time, you know, I also uh, didn't feel like we wanted to run our head against the wall. So without a ground game to the air, it went without much success. The Bears intercepted Breeze once, forced him to fumble twice, and kept him looking over his shoulder all night long. Meanwhile, no such problems for Rex Grossman. Deep. What a play. He got the offense back into a rhythm, hitting Bernard Berrien for this 33-yard score and later handing it off to Thomas Jones for another six. I think we, we handled them pretty well, and, you know, uh, their backs made a lot of big plays. Uh, if you look at the tape, they broke a lot of tackles. They uh, did a lot of things, and we knew that coming in, that's what they were capable of. And, you know, they made plays when they needed to make plays. In the end, the 39-14 loss stings. But by no means can it erase what this team has accomplished this season. From 3-13 and 13 a year ago to a chance to play in the Super Bowl, it's way more than anyone could have ever asked for. We came a long way from practicing in the parking lot to uh, playing in the NFC Championship game. So, you know, it's... You know, just the guys around here, all these guys are winners, and you know what I mean? Hopefully, hopefully we'll do this again next year, and we'll be in the winner's bracket. The only thing that's disappointing is, you know, not playing in this next game, which allows this city a couple more weeks of excitement, obviously, leading up to the Super Bowl, but uh, they've been a huge part of this season, and We've got to look to step up in some other areas now. Uh, this was a game where the stats really told the story. We checked them right now at the running job. I tell you, Deuce McAllister and Reggie Bush very well underutilized. Only 37 yards combined on 10 carries. Meanwhile, on the Chicago side, 183 yards for Cedric Benson and Thomas Jones. On the passing docket, Drew Brees threw it 49 times. Had a couple of touchdowns that intercepted once, 354 yards total. Meanwhile, Rex Grossman, not very efficient, but good enough, 144 yards on 11 completions and one touchdown. The wide receivers of choice, Reggie Bush, seven catches for 132 yards and a touch. Marcus Colston, five for 63 and also a touchdown. Bernard Barian, the big receiver for Chicago, 85 yards on five receptions and, of course, the touchdown. The turnover story was the big story of this game. The Saints coming away with four giveaways four giveaways three by fumble one interception chicago not one turnover on the whole entire game and time of possession time of possession dominated by chicago 35 minutes to new orleans only 24 minutes and 45 seconds so we bring jim henderson in right now and jim the first thing we got to talk about these turnovers we see once again when this team gives the ball away they have a hard time winning they do and most teams do as well you know the bears were the best team in the nfl at taking the ball away so this was something the saints were prepared for they knew ball security was a must in this and against the bears no turnovers. so this was a problem all year long for that Saints secondary another problem today we didn't see deuce McAllister get very many touches at all and this coming off a very good game against philadelphia a week ago well you know the Saints were never able to make the Bears one-dimensional because they ran the ball so well. The Bears were able to make the Saints one-dimensional just by putting eight people in a box. Deuce was six touches. These 46 times between Jones and Benson, they just ran it down the Saints' throws. They had no answers for that. They did that touchdown drive of eight carries by, by uh, Thomas Jones mm -hmm. for a touchdown. He had all eight plays from the line of scrimmage. And this is something that, again, grows up and bit the Saints. This has been a problem for them much of the year as well. Powerful running attacks going right at them. So that's an area that's got to be addressed in the offseason. All right, Jim, that defense on the field a long time. One of the guys we talked to after the game, cornerback Mike McKenzie. All right, here with Mike McKenzie. This has been a difficult finish to a fantastic year for this team. Uh, I mean, we came out. Uh, we was ready for the game. Uh, we just have to tip our hats off to them. Uh, they came out with a lot of intensity. Uh, they played tough out there. and. Uh, they deserve the opportunity to represent the NFC, so that's how it's going to go. And at, at the end of the day, when you look at the final stats of the game, what's going to stand out are the turnovers that this team has. And you guys have been preaching it all year long that you can't have those to win football games. And here it is in this game, the biggest of the year. That, that's the one thing you struggled with. I mean, any time uh, in this lead, uh, you have a lot of turnovers. And defensively, uh, we didn't create many, so we didn't give our offense the opportunity to get back out there. Uh, I just can't say enough good things about the Bears. They found uh, they found a way to 
uh, you know, mustered up points. Uh, they deserve to win. But for the most part, through the first three quarters, you guys? Uh, I mean, we had a shot at it. Uh, we had got ourselves back in the game. But once again, uh, when they needed the plays, Rex Roseman found a way to make the big plays. That's the opportunity uh, that we had today. I was going to say, there's a lot to be proud of with this football team. And I mean, this community's been behind you guys through thick and thin, and this franchise through thick and thin. But this season, to put together what you guys did after being 3-13 and year ago, it really says a lot about the character of this team and, and the big turnaround. So talk about, you know, this, this not ending so bad because you guys made it farther than anyone predicted. I mean, uh, once again, uh, we felt like we definitely had a championship caliber team. Uh, the guys, we stuck together all year. Uh, we found ways to, you know, battle back. Uh, we wasn't, uh, you know, thrown at all when we went down. We've been there before, but uh, today was just a day we was overmatched, but at the same time, uh, we're not going to lose focus of how far we did come this year and uh, uh, all the, you know, joy that we was able to, you know, bring to the city. And uh, for us right now, it's just, uh, it's really just a tough time. Thanks, Mike. Yeah, tough times indeed for this Saints football team here in Chicago. Again, losing 39-14. More with Jim Henderson from Chicago in just a moment. Scott, back to you. Thanks, Juan. Heading into today, there were just six out of the current 32 NFL teams that had never been to a Super Bowl after today. That number stays the same. The Saints, Browns, Texans, Jags, Cardinals, and Lions. Stay with us. We go back to Chicago after the... Well, the Saints team has never panicked all season. Remember back in week two, three turnovers to the Packers put the Saints in an early hole. Like today, that hole not nearly as deep as it could have been, though. Marcus Colston's touchdown just before half, and Reggie's run felt awfully familiar. We go back out to Chicago where we find Juan Kincaid. And Juan, just how quiet did Soldier Field get after Colston's first half touchdown? I tell you what, Scott, that was the perfect remedy for what ailed the Saints in the first quarter. They were struggling with their offense, and then Colston gets in. They come back out after halftime, get in the end zone again. But again, Colston got it all started with his first touchdown here in the playoffs. All right, Scott, here with Marcus Colston. Marcus, this is obviously not the way we want this to end up, but just a lot of mistakes by this team uncharacteristically, and it's the biggest game of the year. Yeah, I mean, uh, we made, like you said, uncharacteristic mistakes against the uh, good team you can't do that coming up back coming back in a game in this situation when you're down a touchdown or down and get they get the safety they go up by four points having a rally become having to become one dimensional how difficult is it to play against a Chicago team that really is just pinning their ears back then I mean they're you know in, in this game for for a reason I mean they're, they're you know one, one of you were part of one of the turnovers had the fumble but on the whole the turnovers really did hurt this team today didn't they? yeah I mean just just playing in a game of this caliber uh, against a, a defense you know as good as the Bears uh, who thrives off turnovers um, it just a lot of times just not gonna come out on top it's been a heck of a ride though hasn't it yeah, it's been it's been a great ride but um, you know, obviously you know one game short of what we wanted thank you Marcus yeah. Yeah, it hasn't been a great ride for this team, and it could have been a lot longer ride, Jim, but there were some turning points in this game. Well, definitely the third quarter after the 88-yard strike uh, from Breeze to Bush. The Saints are driving on the next possession. Um, they give it to Mike Carney. He runs for 11 yards down to the Bear 29, and then the Saints go back to the air. They throw three straight incompletions and bring on Billy Cundiff to attempt a 47-yard field goal. Cundiff had only attempted one other this season, a long one against the Giants, and missed that as well. John Carney had made his last 10. Uh, Cundiff is some five yards short on that attempt. Who knows whether John Carney would have made it or not, but apparently the, the Saints, Sean Payton and Carney had determined in pregame warm-ups that was just beyond the periphery of his range. But after that, the Saints never got any momentum the rest of the game. And we could probably count on one hand how many times the Saints blitzed this afternoon. We can probably count on maybe two fingers how many times they actually got to Rex Grossman. Not much pressure in his face today. Not much pressure at all. When they did blitz, like you said, it was very difficult for them to get there. You know, I think it might have been his first passing attempt of the day. They only misses a sack, but the Saints have no sacks in the game and uh, virtually no pressure. No sacks, no turnovers forced. Not a good recipe to get a victory in a big game like this. No, not at all. I mean, the Bears truly deserve to win this game. The Saints didn't do enough in any area to win it. Okay, Jim, going to have his final thoughts in just a moment. Also, a little bit later in fourth down, we caught up with those who that Saint Nation in Chicago in full force. Mike Hoss will have that story in just a bit. We're live in Chicago, back with more fourth down on four in just a moment. One of the big highlights for the Saints this afternoon here in Chicago, Reggie Bush's 88-yard touchdown reception from Drew Brees. You know, Brees threw the ball 49 times. 
One of the eight receivers to catch a ball, tight end Billy Miller. All right, Billy, we never want to give excuses about losing a football game, but the reason why those turnovers again? Well, I think the Bears do a great job stripping the ball, and we knew that coming into the game. You watch film and fine. Uh, got a little wet, but, you know, for myself, that wasn't a problem. It was hard to watch, but you do get in that rhythm, and you put 14 points on the board. You had to be thinking then, 16-14, oh, this is our game to lose. <clears throat> Absolutely. I mean, you know, when you have a quarterback like Drew Brees and uh, put some drives together, and when the game, we would put a couple plays together. We really couldn't get, you know, drives going. And uh, it's tough coming up this, this short to get, you know, one game away and, and come up short. But at the same time, man, you know, we went out.